Um, some commentators say that we... Can you get a little closer oh, to the mic, please? Thank you. Uh, hi, Professor. Um, some commentators say that we have to wait for a new generation of leaders in Israel to even begin to achieve peace. Um, even with a new generation of leaders, do you believe it's possible to even achieve peace within the Middle East? Could you comment on that? Do I agree? No, I think the main problem is right here. I think the main problem is right here. It's very easy to blame other people for the terrible things they do, right? So you can look at all these bad people in the world and they're doing all kind of awful things. In fact, there's a new literary genre that's developing, which is very widely hailed in the United States. Uh, you can read, you know, laudatory reviews in all the main papers. It's about, uh, it's a series of books, one by the head of the uh, Human Rights Center at Harvard, uh, which do talk about a flaw in the American character and therefore are extremely courageous. Uh, the flaw is that we somehow don't respond properly to the crimes of others. Okay. You take a look at those books and the laudatory reviews and the indices and so on, you notice there's a slight gap. How do we respond to our own crimes? Well, that you can't ask. Okay. So you can go as far as saying, well, we don't respond properly to the crimes of others, and that's an enormous act of courage, and we laud it, and so on. Uh, but what about the vastly more important question about ourselves? And the same is true here. Uh, there will not be, I mean, uh, th there's conflicting groups inside Israel right now, and, and there will be in the future. Uh, but those who want to move towards a peaceful accommodation are not going to get anywhere unless they have support in the United States. And so far, the United States has, for 25 years, insisted on blocking peace. Remember, the Saudi peace plan, in essence, was proposed uh, at the Security Council 25 years ago, blocked by the United States. The U.S. vetoed the similar plan again in 1980. Uh, it blocked, along with Israel, blocked similar Saudi plan in 1981. Right through the 1980s, it was blocking uh, uh, PLO and the Arab state and European initiatives, more or less of the same type. You take a look at the General Assembly records where there's no technical veto. Year after year, from the mid-70s up till the 90s, uh, there are regular votes every December session uh, on similar proposals with numbers like, you know, 150 to 2 U.S. and Israel. Sometimes they pick up you know, Dominica or something, Micronesia. But uh, that's what's been going on. Uh, the, uh, the, there's great uh, praise for uh, Baker, who was very forthcoming, Secretary of State for uh, George Bush. You can read it in the Christian Science Monitor this morning, big review of the uh, so-called peace process, lauding Baker for really going very far. The only thing it doesn't mention and is never mentioned is the Baker plan. That is the official U.S. policy in December 1989 called the Baker Plan. You can read it in the State Department bulletin, uh, which endorsed, I'll tell you what it said, it endorsed the coalition position of the Israeli government, that's Shamir and Paris, their position, which has never been published in the United States except in the dissident literature, but it is the Baker Plan. Uh, their position says first, there cannot be an additional Palestinian state between Israel and Jordan. What does additional mean? Well, it means there already is a Palestinian state, namely Jordan, and there can't be an additional Palestinian state between Israel and Jordan. Second, uh, the status of the occupied territories called Judea, Samaria, and Gaza will be determined according to the guidelines established by the Israeli government. That's point two. Uh, point three is there w we, we will allow free elections under Israeli military rule, uh, and though they didn't mention it, with uh, tens of thousands of Palestinian intellectuals in jail. Well, that last point did get some mention here, showing how forthcoming we are and how much we love democracy. Uh, but the first two, but not, didn't describe it the way I just did. You know, I said free elections, isn't that wonderful? Uh, but uh, that's the Baker plan which is now being lauded as tremendously forthcoming. Uh, in fact, there just isn't an exception. Uh, you take a look at the whole record. It's a formal, it's, these are not secrets. You, know? you don't have to go to declassified records for these. It's all public material. There's simply no deviation from that position. I mean, on paper there is. Like you can read Jimmy Carter in uh, the New York Times a couple of days ago saying, yeah, we all want uh, 
we all agreed, in fact, he even says Begin agreed, on Israeli withdrawal from the occupied territories in 1978. I mean, if he believes that, I, I, you, know, you just have to have pity on him. What Begin said in 1978 is we're not going to withdraw from the occupied territories, we're going to settle them. You want to pay for it, that's fine. Uh, and Carter did. In fact, U.S. aid to Israel went up to half of total U.S. aid. Now, maybe Carter believes he heard Begin say, I'm going to withdraw, but he certainly didn't say it, and he certainly didn't act on it. Now, until that changes, there will be no opportunity for political leadership to develop in Israel that will try to implement these approaches.